They call it an honor killing. It absolutely involves zero honor. You can't look me in the eye and tell me murder is an acceptable way to protect your family's integrity, especially when members of your family were the ones you murdered. But that's exactly what Mohammed Shafia did during his trial for the quadruple, yeah, four homicides. Quadruple homicide of his first wife and three daughters. In fact, he said he would do it again if he had the chance because these women committed the crime of taking advantage of the freedom afforded to all Canadian women, freedom of dress, freedom to form relationships, freedom to leave relationships. Well, it's about time we took away freedom to kill in the name of religion once and for all. Time for some Friday Fury with Anthony Fury. He's the comment editor at the Ottawa Sun. Anthony, I'm guessing your level of fury maxed out over this one. Charles, a lot of people ask the question, has multiculturalism failed? Well, of course it hasn't. I mean, if you take away my shawarma and my sushi, I'm going to go postal. Cultures get along, they can get along quite fine in Canada. People with different languages, different backgrounds. What's failed is cultural relativism, in which we give people a pass when they commit these heinous deeds and we say, oh, no, 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 it, it wasn't that bad. It was because he was from a different culture, a different religion. We just need to understand him more. And this case is a prime example of that. This, this honor killing, this blatant honor killing that's fueled by a religious mentality and Canadian society is going to turn its back to it. I just know it. We've done it before. We're going to do it now. But, Anthony, here's uh, what I need to know about this. Do you think, I mean, you're, you're there, you're, you're in Ottawa. Do you think that his punishment will be any different because he claims that uh, he's motivated uh, by some ancient religion and, and some ancient religious custom? I mean, do, do you think the judge, do you think judges and juries in this country care what people like this are saying about why they do what they do? Yes and no. I mean, smart judges, they don't care. They know that the law is the law and everybody needs to be treated equally in the face of the law, but it's really permeated our culture. The idea of cultural relativism, the idea that, oh, you can take a pass on this crime. Not that they're going to let a guy off, but it's mitigating circumstances. They minimize things. They say, well, it wasn't so much malice, it was because he was compelled to do it through external forces, blah, 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 rather than what it is, which is cold-blooded murder, instigated through his own desires. Well, we, do you want some kind of separate law? I mean, we've got uh, hate laws on the books, and regardless of how you and I feel about that, uh, we, 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 you know, we're not, we're not for that, but I mean, that, that's the law. We've got hate laws. Uh, do, you want, uh, do you want a law... Uh, that says you get even more of a guarantee that you're going to jail for life if you're calling it an honor killing? Do you, want, you certainly don't want a law that, that lets people off. So what are you looking for from the Canadian legal system, if anything, on this? What I'm looking for from the Canadian legal system is not to allow religious matters to be mitigating issues. I'm not looking for religious matters to be matters that, that make uh, sentences tougher at all. I'm looking to take religion completely out of the equation and us to look at the acts based on what they are. Now, and so in some cases, this does happen, but in previous cases, this has been seen as mitigating circumstances, and that's a real shame. So you're really worried that this guy is going to get sympathy from the legal system because he says he's abiding by some ancient tribal ritual? Yeah, I think he is. You, 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 I mean, you're serious. You, you'd bet the ranch that they will just slap him on the wrist for four murders, four homicides? No, they're not going to slap him on the wrist. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't speak to the specifics of what the sentencing is going to be. I, I'll attend the sentencing hearing. I'm going to write about it. But the thing that I am very reticent about is that we're going to put a chill on this debate and we're going to send a message out there that somehow, oh, it, you know, it wasn't a religiously motivated thing and therefore, uh, therefore you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a terrible thing. This is going to send a message that, that people can continue doing this. All right, uh, let's, let's talk about how uh, this uh, plays out in, uh, I'll call it the uh, intellectual cultural marketplace. Are you finding certain organizations are loath uh, to criticize honor killings, that certain ethnic organizations just don't want to go near this? I mean, where do they stand? Yeah, that's more where my complaint lies. My complaint doesn't so much lie, like I said, with, uh, with the actual judicial system. The problem is you read in certain publications, certain newspapers are going to run the story, and they're going to say, well, you know what, let's not jump to the conclusion that it was religion motivating this person. Some people are going to put forward an argument saying, no, this is actually domestic violence in general. This is violence against women 
in general. It's not specific to religion and it's not specific to, to someone's culture and that's obviously patently false and those are the issues that I take really great offense to. Are women's organizations doing very much with this issue in Canada? No, I don't think they are. I think in many publications, in Now Magazine in Toronto, for instance, they repeatedly refuse to stand up for women's rights when it means they also have to call out certain religious groups or certain ethnic groups. They refuse to stand up for gay rights when it comes to calling out religious groups or, or ethnic groups. They, it's as if they think that there's a war going on between different, uh, di di different uh, minority groups and they have to somehow choose which one that they're going to put higher in the hierarchy. All right, so uh, a few weeks ago we talked about human rights and uh, the ad uh, in uh, Kijiji which said, uh, if, if you're not Muslim, don't bother uh, trying to rent an apartment here. And uh, that's very, very difficult to do if you're talking about any other religion or, or orientation or what have you, so it gets a pass. And you're telling me that on something as heinous as this, so there's something a lot more serious uh, that, that, than housing rentals, you're saying that culturally and intellectually, Honor killings. Honor killing. I mean, even the word is it's such an oxymoron to me. But you're, you're saying that even this kind of sick behavior is getting a pass. Well, it's that the sick behavior is being denied. Nobody's saying, oh, yes, the sick behavior happened. Therefore, we're going to give it a pass. What they're saying is, well, you know what? Maybe it was an accident or maybe it was just violence against women. Maybe it was just, you know, family having little conflict and, and things went awry. And that's what's happening in certain circles right now, certain supposedly women's rights groups that claim to stand up for people like these, like these young women, four girls, uh, four women who just wanted to live life free in Western society. Some of the girls wanted to have boyfriends. Some of them, oh, unfortunately wanted to wear clothing that showed a little bit of skin. And their father, you know, the, the, the seat of patriarchy freaked out and tried to kill them. And yet, isn't the patriarchal society what so many of these women's groups are supposed to be fighting against? All right, let me ask you this, Anthony, just to take this to a different level. Is there any way to do preemption here? Because based on what we're hearing, it would seem there probably are a lot of young Muslim women, young girls and their moms who are in fear of this. I mean, they, they, they would have to be. Is there anything the society, is there anything the government should do? Is this any, you know, we talk about the nanny state. Is this the business of the government to investigate how much fear there is in certain families of this kind of barbaric behavior? It's not really the business of the government to get into people's personal lives at all. I'm vehemently opposed to it. But it is the business of the government to respond when people call and ask for help. Now, let me clarify what I mean. Recently, we've we've been telling people, hey, we need to break the silence on, on mental health, on depression, on suicide, on, 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 on many different issues. And I think that's great, and I think we do. And we're telling people, you need to come forward. You need to go to counselors, guidance workers, the police, your teachers, local community leaders, and ask them for, for assistance if you think a problem is brewing. In this specific case, in the Kingston Canal murders, we have a situation in which these girls did come forward. They talk to community workers, they talk to family support workers, they talk to people at school, and they said, I'm afraid my father's going to kill me. And Are you did. suggesting, we've only got a few seconds left, are you suggesting, because this is very important, that they did not get help because the helpers, the professional helpers, wanted to stay away from what's known as the Muslim thing? I mean, is, is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, I'm suggesting to return to my opening comments that these people that they went to for help are complicit in the cultural relativism, which is unfortunately damaging people's lives and, and ending their lives in certain cases. And that, that's what really has to end. Anthony, thank you so much for the Fury tonight. We'll see you again next, next Friday. Have a good weekend. Anthony Fury in Ottawa.